Well, what's up guys, Barry Michael Doyle here and welcome to episode 9 and the finale of our building a YouTube search application with React Native. Now in this application we're going to get our app ready for deployment. That means building an APK file or an IPA file depending on whether or not you're building on Android or iOS. You can also do both if you're keen but I'm going to be building it in Android today because I've got a developer account for Android and that would just be much easier. I'm not going to go through the full deploy into the app store process but I'm going to get us an APK which is ready to go to the app store. Now the first thing we're going to do is, well here's a lovely app by the way, it's looking great, uh, ready to be deployed so we're not going to add anything to it, but we do have to do some final things in our code. So in our code we have, here I've opened the app.js file but we don't need that. Let's go to the package first because this is easier to edit. Now this one, we've got our name, that's fine and normal. We want to make this version 1.0.0. I mean, we can make it anything we want, but I want to say that. And I want to give it a description of a simple YouTube search app called application. That's just my description. And I'm going to have to copy it later, so just for the app.json. But yeah, that's, you can make it whatever you want, but I'm just making it that because that's what our application does. And I'm setting myself to the author of this application just because why not? You can do your name there because you made it yourself just with a bit of help from me. Probably can say true if you want to keep this node package thing private. It's actually not a big deal to change these things, but I just like to change them for like simplicity's sake of having my app look a bit more formal if I ever am going to publish this or put it on GitHub or something, which I actually will do. Uh, I'll be doing that in the next video, but that's going to go at the start of the series. So if you're coming to the series like two weeks later, you'll see the first episode to this episode zero. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's get back to application. So here we have our app.json file and uh, everything is kind of as should be. You can change this to be capitalized, simple YouTube search and see the reason we have a slug that stays the same. And here this is an, amp an empty new project. You can change that to a simple YouTube search application just for that. Uh, what else do we want to change? Versions 1.0, that's all right. This primary color is used for Android. I'm going to change it to the YouTube red color, which is E62111. No, not 111, just 117. Uh, that's that red color that we had going. I think if I hold, oh, nope, doesn't do it in Visual Studio. Some editors allow you to see what the color actually looks like. Might happen in other codes, just not JSON. So this is a link to our icon, which is stored here in assets slash icon slash app icon. If you hear any background noise, I'm really sorry. There's a guy with a chainsaw going crazy outside. Anyway, uh, there's also the loading icon. You always notice when your app is kind of loading, it will show this loading icon. See, here's our icons. That's just our app icons boring, and the loading icons the same thing. You can change that if you want. I'm not going to do that now. It's a bit out of scope here. And hide exponent text. Now, when your app is loading up, it's got this little made by expo thing there, and that's always showing. You can just say hide exponent text to true, and then that won't show anymore so your app will look a little bit more professional it doesn't look like you just stole it from expo which is great we don't have to change the package of opts now what do we need to change we need to so is support tablet yes we want this to support tablets and we also want to add a build number here this is just required for is and the build number can be a string and it's going to be our first build so it's one then we have an Android section here, which we write, and we want to add package. So you can make this whatever you want, but most people make a com and then their company name, whatever name you want to do. I mean, I, I have my own specific one that I use, but yeah, company name dot simple YouTube search. So this is the name of the app. Dot com is just mentioning as a package and this you can kind of put your own username in here I'm just putting a company name for simplicity's sake I mean you could even just call this YouTube but then it's your own version of YouTube but I'm going to call it simple YouTube search sorry there we go and the other things we want to add here is the version code which is just like the IS one the build number but in this case we keep it as a integer notice this is an integer and this is a string Android and iOS are just differently weird that way. And then finally, 
I've noticed for some of my applications that I've deployed, okay, I've only deployed one in all honesty. Um, when you deploy it, by default, it gives you a ton of permissions. So, if you set the permissions to nothing, it won't ask for a ton of permissions. For when it's listed in the App Store, it doesn't show a million required permissions. And having a million unnecessary permissions required does tend to scare off a bunch of users. So I recommend in all your applications, you just set this permissions to none, or you can go check out the documentation. I'll actually leave a link in the documentation on how to set up this app.json file, as well as links further on in deploying, just in case you want to do some extra things that I don't cover in this video. Anyway, we can save this now. And now what we can actually do is you can just click publish here and it, your app will actually publish, which is pretty cool. So this, this doesn't publish it to App Store or anything, but this publishes it to Expo. So your account, my account in Expo is called Barry Michael Doyle. So this is probably going to show there now. Might as well add show there, why not? Um, it builds and stuff. But yeah, basically it means you can go to your account or you can send other people to your account and this will be live on Expo and they can actually, they'll see this whole share button here for your application. They can, if they have Expo, they can open your app just using this barcode, which is really cool. But obviously you don't want to just have people download Expo to use your app. You want to put it on the App Store. So in order to do that, uh, we need to go to our console. Why do I have two consoles open? Okay, they both go to the same place. Anyway, I've already done the navigating to a simple YouTube search. So just to save some time there. What you need to do now is you need to make sure that you've got EXP installed. So you've got to say npm install dash G because this is a global thing. We don't want this installed on our project. We want this installed like on our computer. And we just say EXP. Now, I think mine should be done. So this actually, I, I don't even know why this is doing anything at the moment. I'm going to fast forward to when this is done. We'll be right back. Right, that basically finished. There must have been just some new version for me. But basically that will install your EXP. Or X or whatever we want to call it. It's sort of short for Exponent. Which is uh, shorter for Expo. <laughs> anyway. What we want to do is go Expo Login. Now I... Uh, what? Oh, sorry. Not Expo Login. Exp login exp login and i should already be logged in um so i don't know why this is taking a while either anyway let me skip to when that's done and you can follow the steps that it takes you there but it's probably going to say for me that i've already logged in and stuff are done oh look in the background my project published so that's great my project's available over there at that little exp.host slash at barry michael doyle slash simple youtube search so that's really cool to know Oh, here we go. It's already, that's done here. You're already logged in as Barry Michael Doyle. Logging as a new user. Nope, I want to be logged in as me. Um, so what we want to do now is say exp start. And let's just make sure that our expo is running and making sure the project's all set up correctly and it's on its latest version. So when it does deploy, it's going to deploy the current working version. And if you've made code changes, to your project, which I haven't really done that since I've published it and built it last. There we go. It says it's already running for this project, so it's fine. And it's looking good, so we don't have to stress. It basically just makes sure everything is up and running properly and set up correctly, as it says. And now, great thing, the magical command line, so simple. We say exp build colon, and this is where you want to say Android if it's an Android app, or iOS, oh, it's just iOS. If it's an iOS app, I'm going to do Android. So we want to build an APK. If you said iOS, it would have built an IPA file. Now, this takes quite some time. So this is where you want to get up and go get some uh, coffee or tea or hot chocolate or whatever nice warm drink you want to get. Or cold drink. I don't know. At the time of recording this video, I am freezing because there's like cold front storms outside. But anyway. Don't know what there's a guy doing at the chainsaw outside in this weather, but yeah, that's happening. So yeah, what you want to do with Android is, if you've ever uploaded an Android or built an Android application before not using Expo, you have to worry about this whole key store thing. Now, the nice thing about Expo is they can handle it for you. So you can either handle it yourself, which I don't recommend because it's just, that's so much nicer to Expo handle it. But if you want to handle it yourself, press two. I'm going to press one because Expo does a great job in doing it. So as I said, this takes forever, 
go grab a drink, and we will be back when this is done. Okay, if you're still here, um, I did just notice, if you're doing iOS, it's not going to ask you about the key store stuff, because that's an Android-specific thing. With iOS, you actually need to have a developer account, so they're going to ask for your Apple ID and password. So if you don't have that, then that's a bit of a shame. That's just kind of what's required to build apps for Apple, because it's a mission. Unfortunately, I don't own an iPhone, so I've never actually bothered getting the whole developer account and everything. Because the developer account, if I'm not mistaken, is $99 annually. And I just, since I haven't ever had a Mac or iPhone or anything, I haven't bothered getting that and deploying to iPhones. I will do that in the future, probably by the end of the year. This is 2017. By the beginning of 2018, I'm sure I'll have one. Anyway, uh, so that's doing some stuff. And yeah, this is great, actually, timing. You don't have to go get your coffee and stuff anymore. So... With the Google Play Store, you need $25, and that's once off. So that's, I did that like three years ago, so things are quite chilled there. So what we see here is we have this XP, EXP, sorry, I can't even speak properly now. I'm going to go EXP build status. Now this checks. So basically the build is started, and it takes quite a while to complete. So if we say EXP build status, it goes to check how's it going on the application. And this is probably going to say it's not done yet. It's very unlikely that it will be done already because this does take a while. Um, I want to actually show this part to you, so I don't want to go away just yet. But this, it basically checks how's it going with your project. And um, there we go. It says the Android build is in progress. So it's still busy building. If you were building for both, you could actually go build. No, actually, I can't build the iOS one while the Android one's going because this is in progress. So, yeah. You basically just want to every now and then go check for the status. So you want to say exp build status and eventually it will say, hey, it's done. Here's the link to the APK. So for now, I'm going to take a break and I will be right back with the finished product. So I've actually literally just gone to go make myself a cup of tea and come back and it's still busy building. So if you are still watching and you haven't got enough to go do something, literally go make yourself something nice or go watch some other videos or even here's a good call to action like this video if you haven't liked this video yet give it a like um obviously if you liked it if you liked the whole series like all the videos and if you want more hit that subscribe button and then you get a nice little bell next to your subscribe button after you've subscribed which notifies you of new videos by me so you might want to click that as well anyway i'll be back in another couple of minutes when this is actually finally done Okay, great. So I finally got it running. Uh, yeah, again, just keep checking every now and then, EXP build status, and then eventually when it's not still building, like previously it was still building, build in progress, when it's not still building, it will say Android and APK, and that's a link to the APK. Now, unfortunately, in my console, I can't actually copy-paste this, so I've done the tedious task of typing it out uh, over here. And hopefully I've typed this out correctly, because if it's not correct, this is, this is going to be wrong and I have to do something. So I'm going to press enter. And it's just taking its time doing a little bit of loading. And there we go, I typed it in right. So there we go, it starts downloading the APK from where we've kept it. And that is all. So that's going to take its while to download. But basically this will download and let me just go back here. That's going to download as an APK and you can deploy that straight to the App Store. Now, you are going to have to do some other things in the App Store or in Google Play to make it ready for deployment, like adding images and descriptions and things, but that's all pretty standard stuff, and it's not rocket science. So, a pretty similar process for the iOS application in that case. So, right now, over here, we are busy downloading an APK file. And yeah, you can see my internet's really slow today. Two hours left to download, like, 23 megs. I'm sure that's just a joke. So with the iOS app, it will give you a .ipa file, if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, anyway, that's how that works. So anyway, guys, that's going to cut it for this series. If you guys want to see any other sort of applications built or just have any sort of feedback, just shout in the comments. I've already received a few comments on other things that we can make, so I really appreciate those. And yes... Always appreciate the likes and subscribes, guys. So if you haven't already, like and subscribe the video. And I will catch you in the next one. Ciao.